Hello viewers and Joe Tactics here and today I will be teaching you guys about the binary adder. Now this particular adder is called the ripple carry adder and I'll be teaching you how it works, why it works, uh, the functions, everything about it pretty much and uh, so yeah just pretty much a simple ripple carry adder, uh, how to make one and all that. And I've been doing redstone computing lately as you can see. I've wanted to do it for a long time, it was just so confusing, I couldn't even comprehend it. So I really tried, I really put effort in, and I finally uh, understood some of it. <clears throat> so this is the most basic component that uh, most redstone computers will use. It's called the adder. It's very, very basic. Um, I know it's used in ALUs. It's used in a lot, right? So I'm going to teach you guys what it is first and how it works. <clears throat> so we have one, two, four, eight, and this could go on forever, 16, 32, 64, etc. Well, here we have lamps and they match up. So it's one, two, four, eight, sixteen, etc. Now these are our inputs. We have two inputs for each unit, and we'll get back one output. So we have eight levers. If you, if you want to uh, count the C input, then we have 9. And then we have um, 5 outputs. This is just the extra carry, so we can see that it's outputting 16. So let's get started. 1 plus nothing, because each of these levers is going to represent 1, because this sign tells us that. First unit will always represent 1. We hit this. It's going to send a pulse through and reach here says one right so one plus nothing else is one now we have two ones one plus one is two so it's not gonna light up this one anymore it's gonna light up this next one okay and we can also turn on this C in and that will also count as one so one plus one plus one that's three but we don't have a lamp here to represent three we have one two and four but no three so we use 2 and 1 at the same time to represent 3. And that's the idea behind binary, that it can represent any number using the current numbers that it already has. So um, that's basically how it works. And if I were to do this, you would move on to the next one. And then all I have to do is flip this next one. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 8 plus 8 is 16. If you're totally lost, that's completely fine, because that's normal, and I was lost. The reason I want to do a tutorial on this is because it was hard for me to learn, and I just want to make it easier for you guys, because it took me a long time to get this, and I feel like I can clear up some mistakes before they happen. So, um, where's a place to build? Uh, this place isn't really big enough. I wish I had a bigger plot. I guess I'll just build over over here. We'll make some room, that's fine. So, um, how do you build this? How do you even go about building a binary calculator? Well, let's analyze what we want it to do. Well, we want it so that whenever we have one input, when, whenever we have one, we want it to be on. So this is one unit. We're, we're not talking about the other units. We're going to cut those off. Just pay attention to this one. And whenever we have two, we want it to be off, right? Because if you have two, we want it to carry over to the next bit and show there. Because it can't show on this one. This only represents one bit. And then if I flick this lever, which is three, then I want it to turn on along with this, right? So that's what we want it to do. Now, what logic gate is going to do this. It would be called the XOR gate. The XOR gate basically acts as an optional inverter. That's one way of thinking of it. Or it gives an output only when one input is on. Not both, not none, only one. So um, let's start over. Uh, I don't know where to start. I guess I'll start over here back where I decided to. Okay, so we're just going to put a simple XNOR, and there are other designs for this. There's just a reason 
Actually, there's a good reason why I'm using this design rather than any other design. It's because that this design will allow us to pull the and out of this really easily. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And we will be able to pull the carry out out of the uh, XOR. So we're going to put this over here, actually, and run it into another XOR. But before we get started, just so you guys know, this is effectively a half adder. So what it does, I mean levers, two ways to think of it, like I said, I'm just going to switch this temporarily. You can think of it like this, right? So I'm going to get a lamp so we have a better representation. Uh, I don't need glowstone right now. Okay, so this acts as an optional inverter, right? Right now it's not inverted, so we'll say this is the inverter, this is the input. They can be switched up if you want, it doesn't really matter. So if I hit this, it's on. If I flip it off, it's off. But if we turn on the inverter, it's on when this is off, and it's off when this is on. So you can think of it that way, or you can think of it like this. When one of these inputs is on, this is going to turn on. Two ways to think of it, right? So what we want to do here is we want to hook this up to another XOR gate. And you may be thinking, oh, this is going to get complicated. Actually, we haven't done anything yet. This is nothing at all. All we're doing, literally, is just taking an XOR, putting it into another XOR. What, what does that do, you may ask? It does the exact same thing, right? An XOR going into an XOR does the exact same thing as one XOR without anything connected. So without this, this does the same thing, if that makes sense. See, when we turn on one, lights up. We can also use it as an inverter, like we said, inverts the signal. We can also think of it that way. And you may ask now, why in the world did we just plug it into another one if it doesn't do anything? Well, it does do a, it does do something. It allows us to do something. It allows us to put the C input right here so that we can have three inputs now instead of only two. So we can turn this on, turn this on. So as you can see, we have three inputs now. Now in adding, you really don't need three inputs. In subtracting, you do though. So it's really important to have the C in if you're going to uh, do operations besides adding. And if you're not, it's still just good to have it there, so just keep it there. So, um, hold on doing a vid. I'm going to turn off the chat just so we don't get distracted. All right, sorry about that. So, um, now, where was I? We need to get the carry out. So this is the carry in. We want it so that one plus 1 is going to equal 2, not 0. Right now it equals 0 because this can only represent 1. Represents 1. Each of these levers, like I said, represents 1. 1 plus 0 is simply 1. So what if we want to represent 2 or even 3? So in order to do that, we need to know the difference between 2 and 3, or uh, 1, 2, and 3. So if I flick this on and this on, it's off. And if I flick this off, or I mean on, off, I meant off. So if these are both off, basically, this is off. And if they're both on, it's still off. So how do we know the difference if you're taking two ones and adding them together to get two? Because it still shows up as zero. Well, if you pay attention to this redstone dust right here, the only way for it to turn on is when both of these are on, right? So this is intentional. We did this on purpose. This is why we used this particular design for our XORs. All we have to do is put a torch up here, and boom, we have an instant AND gate. Only whenever both of these are on does this torch turn on. Now what does this do? Well, we can take this, ne this to our next adder, so we're going to put this three away, give us give ourselves some space. So I'm just going to make another make another unit and we're going to this is often the most confusing part is the carry out which is taking a signal and transferring it to another unit, right? So I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. 
because that's the part that had me confused for a while. Okay, so I'm simply just building another, and it will be an exact replica of the last. So, there we go. Oh, nope. You always want to have them on the same side, and you never want to have them on the same side that your C input is on, because that defeats the purpose. So just keep it on the opposite side. Alright, so hopefully he doesn't distract me. So here's what we're going to do. Right? So I'm going to put this lamp here. I'm going to write 2 on it. Now how do we get the carry? Right? How do we get this carry? Well, like we've said, when we turn both of these on, this comes on. So we know that 1 plus 1 is 2, and this torch represents 2. So all we have to do is plug 2 right on into here. So we're going to uh, we're going to take this over here actually, and we're just going to plug this in for two now. Now this isn't correct, so don't do this. Just watch me. Now what if what if you had this one plus one, which should be two, but it comes out to zero? Well, that's because we haven't compensated for this carry in yet. We have to say. If the carry-in and either one of these is on, then we want to send an output. Or, if the carry-in and both of these are on. So to do that, what do you know? Look, we have another AND gate right here. And the only way for it to go off is if one of these is on, or both. But see, then this one is off, and we can activate it using that torch. So all we have to do is AND it together. Boom. Now we have this AND. We have this... Uh, and gate and we have now um, we have now fixed it so that every situation the output will be made accordingly so that was kind of vague uh, what I meant but what I meant to say was that whenever whenever you turn on both of these it sends an output and whenever you turn on this it sends an output or this so, what that means is if you, do, you, if you ever do 1 plus 1 on any of these, it knows this unit can't handle it. So it sends it over to the next unit, and then that unit can handle it, right? So it's the same thing as last time. Remember how we sent, before all of this, we sent a 1 to this unit. We don't need to do that. We're just going to send a 1. See how it goes through and lights up. Well, that's the exact same thing we're doing with this carry-in, right? Because this is just another input, and we know that an XOR connected to an XOR is the same thing as an XOR. So if we hit this, this turns on, right? And this is powering this. Now, it's the same exact thing to power the equal and opposite side. So all I have to do is hit this, and this gives carry-out 1 plus 1 is 2, and then... This is worth double the value of this, so it just carries on over, inputs, and then it gives us a signal, right? Two. So, if you guys have any questions or you or you are confused, then please leave a comment below, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and help you, because I tried to make this tutorial as simple as possible, and I'm not the best at explaining things. I know this, so uh, don't yell at me in the comments. Just uh, leave your feedback about. If you have any other ways that I should have explained it better, just leave it in the comment section below. Maybe I'll add an annotation of parts people find confusing. So, um, yeah. I hope you guys understand the adder now. It is really useful in ALUs, redstone computers, pretty much anything redstone computing, you will use the adder in. And, just so you know, this is not a one-time deal. You can, um, we can go three blocks over here. We can just make another adder module like this right so let me just make a quick another adder module okay a little bit of lag there Alright, so as you can see, 
I have um, created another one. And all we'd have to do to this one is the same exact thing we did the last one. Torch, torch, not there. We would connect them up, just like we did last time. And then we would take the redstone down, connect it up just like last time. And then let's say we did 1 plus 1 carries over to plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, so it carries over to 4. And that's how that works. Now imagine that you flipped all these levers at the exact same time. Like you had redstone wires leading to it, it and you activated that redstone at the uh, same time. Now what would happen, actually let me show you what would happen. There's a reason this is called a ripple carry adder. It has a downside. The signal must calculate the carry and then it goes into this and then it calculates the carry and then it goes into this. And then if you have like 10 of them, it's going to have to calculate the carry for a little bit. So see it ripples through. The signal ripples through and then it calculates and then finds it. Just so you guys know, this is not the only type of adder. I just wanted to inform you, that's why this is called ripple carry. And there are other adders that don't require it to ripple through like this. They insta-carry, but those are more complicated, so we'll get into those maybe later. Maybe we won't get into them at all. I don't know. So uh, stay tuned on my channel to see what's coming up. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a rating, comment, and hit that subscribe button.